Hey everyone, Austin here with Carlson Cards. Today's video should be a pretty educational one, hopefully, and helpful for those of you watching here. I get a lot of these types of questions often with my videos, you know, kind of any tips for finding cards, where do you find your cards, those sort of things. Uh, so today's video, I'm gonna dive into seven tips for finding gradable cards with eBay specifically. These tips range from beginner tips to maybe something more that I've found out over the years that have really helped me. So I hope you find something here that's helpful for you. Not an expert by any means, but if something is helpful in this video, that's the main purpose of me putting this together. Now you might ask, why do you wanna find gradable cards, period? What's the point of that? Um, so I'll share it from my perspective. There's two different ways that I enjoy hunting down ungraded cards and then grading them myself. So two things, I really enjoy collecting football cards. Uh, this has been an avenue where without the deepest of pockets and crazy budget, I can make and put together a really nice condition collection by finding cards that are ungraded, instead of buying the tens directly, I'm grading them and making them myself of sorts. I guess you could call it that way. So on the slide, for instance, are four cards here that I bought directly all on eBay, I think, except for maybe the left one, um, and graded myself and got a 10. And they're cards that, you know, I myself would never grow out of my way to go buy a 10. I just really, I wouldn't say could afford the justification to pay the 10 premium on these kind of things. But buying ungraded for a fourth, sometimes even lower of the price, has allowed me to put together a very high grade collection on a budget. I think that's the main perspective and why I enjoy all of this. Then the flip side, you know, like I do with many of my videos, I also buy and sell cards. I enjoy that as well through eBay. Um, so this is an opportunity where if you're watching and maybe aren't sure where you want to collect yet, but you maybe have an interest in buying and selling cards and starting an eBay store, hopefully some of this is helpful for you as well. So the first tip, and this is very important, this is the only very wordy slide I would say, is that you must set your expectations appropriately. This is super, super important before you start diving into buying cards with the hopes of grading. Um, so number one, not all cards need to be graded. Not all cards should be graded. This is okay. You must keep this in mind. Um, so you might you know, see listings where you see an issue and you're like, oh man, maybe if I just buy that, it'll come in in better condition. Trust me, it never does. So don't, don't bother with it. Um, and then on the flip side, you got to understand like my second bullet here, are you looking for all tens or are you okay with eights and nines? For instance, myself, right? When I'm grading, I'm probably a little more lenient than most people. I'll send cards that I think are probably nines, you know, could maybe get a 10 or maybe an eight on the flip side. That's the kind of card I'm looking for. But I know some of you, you know, especially in the comments I see, right? You're probably just looking for more of the 10. And so if you're buying off of eBay, it's really honestly just tough to make this happen. My perspective is, I'm assuming if I'm buying 10 cards on eBay, three or four of those are not going to be gradable. If you can't accept that and look look past that, I guess you would say, without getting you know upset at sellers or assuming you're getting screwed over, this probably avenue probably isn't for you. It's just a fact. A lot of cards out there are not graded. They are not in mint condition. That's just how this works, especially depending on the era that you're working within and you know buying and selling cards within. So then final bullet here, and this is something that you know has been important and I guess helpful for me to think through is, is this a card for your collection? Um, so for me, sometimes, you know, if a card specifically for my collection, 100%, it affects what kind of grade I'm shooting for. You know, if it's a card that's numbered out of 10, I'm not going to have another chance to buy it. You know, if I see a flaw, do I really care? And the price makes sense? Probably not. Um, you know, this is just an example. I just want to share that because if you're, you know, buying specifically to then sell, or if you're buying for your collection, it might really vary what your threshold here is on what you're looking for. All right, now that we got the boring stuff out of the way, let's get into the actual like really bread and butter type tips. So first thing is, this is probably a super obvious one, but analyze the photos and descriptions as much as possible. Like I just mentioned, if you see an issue in the photo, it 100% is going to be there when it arrives. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's not going to randomly, you know, USPS is not going to take their time to smooth out the car to make it look better. It's not going to happen. Um, in addition, you know, I threw a photo here of the Steph Curry with a description on the bottom. I just found this off eBay have no idea if this is a good price. I'm just saying, we're going to pretend this is a card where maybe looking at buying, let's say, you know, I collect Curry and I want to get a Topps rookie. Maybe I don't want to pay for a nine or a 10. So I'm probably looking at an ungraded copy. So, you know, this is an example where if I was looking at this listing, I would, you know, look at the card here, flip it over. I don't have an image on the back here, but I'm going to guess there's probably some whitening this set usually does. Um, but then I check the description and it looks like it, you know, the guy even here, the seller is very, very upfront about it saying the card is not meant has some surface and corner flaws, dents, et cetera. So if this is you know, an example of where, again, you're looking for buying a card at a good deal to maybe get a higher grade, probably not a good example of one you should be buying. This is very important you look at this. One thing I've liked that eBay's done lately too is they have a condition spot. So you can see 
This one says ungraded slash excellent right above the buy it now button. So usually if I see that, but then, you know, I'm not really seeing in the thing in the photos or in the description, you might get away with it. Maybe there's kind of under grade, you know, under, under seller condition. But a lot of times if you're seeing that it allows you a chance to double check and you're probably missing something, you know, if they put excellent and not, you know, near mint to mint, there's probably something wrong with the card. The third tip here that, uh, you know, I think is really, really important. And I don't know that everyone really thinks through this necessarily is you put your detective hat on. Um, so if, if you're seeing a card, let's pretend again, that Curry, maybe there wasn't conditional issues. It looked nice. You know, the description said card is near mint to mint, right? You know, whatever. Uh, what next step I do is look at the seller's other listings, especially on an expensive card like that. So does the seller appear to grade themselves is what I ask myself. If I'm looking through the listings. Does it look like this photo I have shown here? Are there just tons of graded cards with new certification numbers in the, I think we're at like the 800 millions or 80 million, something like that. The PSA cert starts with an eight or a nine um, shortly here. I would be concerned because more than likely if there's a high dollar card, they're selling it ungraded. There's obviously a reason they haven't graded it. You know, I think of it just the same if you're at a card show, right? If a dealer has a showcase full of really nice graded cards, they clearly seem to grade themselves. Then they have that one, ungraded, just sitting there tempting you. I mean, you know, you always just got to think, why would they not grade it? And so that's what I asked myself. It's a good, you know, tip to yourself, because again, if you see one that's pretty nice, but they have cards that seem like, again, why wouldn't you have graded it? It just gives me some skepticism before purchasing. The fourth tip here, I think that's really important. And these are all stats I pulled for that curry here, for example, is you need to understand set condition and gem rate, because if you're buying a card that, um, you know, checks the boxes on the prior two slides. The condition looks nice. The photos look good. Um, you know, the seller maybe has a couple graded cards or different, you know, some BGS, some SGC, some, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter the grading company, but it doesn't really seem like they grade everything. That's not necessarily all of their inventory on eBay. You know, then the next thing I look at, especially in a high dollar card is to understand the set condition and gem rate. The way I look at this is if I'm buying a card, and it comes in in good representative condition for the whole set, right? Not every card's perfect, but if it's representative of the set, there's no obvious issues. Um, this PSA pop report that I have pulled up here will probably give you a pretty good idea of what your card will grade. So again, let's say I'm dropping in a card to PSA or SGC, whatever grading company you're going to use, and you check their pop report. If you have a copy that looks pretty dang nice, I would assume most people who have sent cards are also look pretty dang nice. So if you're looking at this, I could see that, you know, me to say I'm expecting a 10 here on the curry if I'm going to purchase it. It's so unlikely, right? You're looking at less than a 10% gem rate, like 8%. But if your expectations are an 8 or a 9 and you looked at the gem rate, it's like, okay, you know, actually nice condition ones do seem to get 8s or 9s. I'm not seeing major flaws. Then that gives you another, you know, another set of evidence here if you're the detective that, you know, this might be a good, good deal. This might be a good card I can buy and then grade. That's, you know, again, something I try to use. We have all the data in front of us with these companies with a site like Gemrate, which I have the logo shared here. There's a lot of useful tools to really dive into some of this information before you make a purchase, or maybe it's to start to set up a saved search if you're looking for a specific set or something like that. The fifth thing is, again, let's say, you know, again, it's a high dollar card. They're not necessarily comfortable with buying or, um, you know, it's on the higher end of a price point of a type of card you typically buy. Um, I would say don't be afraid to message. Again, let's say everything checked out. Um, you know, just sanity check. I'm just going to message a seller. Or maybe I see like the corner looks slightly indented, right? Or something like that. Now I will say this is a, this is a big asterisk on this one. Don't be that annoying person who's messaging on $5 cards. I mean, just from my perspective, it's not worth your time or theirs. They're mob probably not going to respond, but if it's a higher dollar card, I don't think there's any problem with messaging and saying, Hey, this card seems in nice condition. Um, is there any major flaws that you had seen? I didn't see anything in description. Just want to double check before I sent in an offer or purchased it. You know, if I'm a seller, I don't think I have any issue with that. It probably seems like a prospective buyer. And then the flip side, as a buyer, you might get a nasty response, something stupid. You know, just something that, again, puts that little bit of evidence in your head that, you know, maybe this isn't the best card to purchase. My sixth tip, and this is something that, again, I think it's um, hidden in this grand scheme of things. Everyone thinks PSA or bus sometimes it feels like, or SGC or bus, whatever kind of you know realm you dwell in. But I would say don't underestimate crossing over from other companies to your preferred company. So especially if you can save money by doing so. Um, what I have shared here is one of my, actually probably my favorite card in my collection. That's a Peyton Manning uh, 2002 Finest. They're numbered out of 25, extremely rare. Um, basically I ended up buying a BGS 9.5 because I knew I would never be able to afford a PSA 10. 
In today's era, the BGS Sign 5 sometimes are half price or even, you know, a fourth or a third of the price. I mean, it just depends what kind of card you're looking at. And so for me, this was a really obvious example of where over time I have learned that these companies are so similar. I mean, again, it's kind of the example of why pay for a PSA 10 where you can buy a BGS Sign 5, an SGC 9 5 or 10 when the price is way, way, way lower and more than likely you can cross them over if you prefer PSA or another company. Um, so this is just something I want to share because again, don't limit yourself to just raw cards. If you if you really adamantly want your collection an SGC slab or a PSA slab, don't roll out buying BGS or some of these weird companies that you have faith in their grading, but don't necessarily want your card in that slab. Again, I know some people don't really care, but this is just something I feel like, again, if we're talking from a budget perspective and growing a really awesome and great collection on a budget, sometimes there's a great chance to get huge discounts just buying the card, not the grade slash grading company. And then you end up getting the dang grade you wanted to begin with anyway for a half price or less. So that's something I wanted to share here. My final tip is that, again, specifically if this is a card for your collection, sometimes buying the 10 makes way more sense. I have a photo of a card here that I purchased earlier, I think towards the end of last year. So I really want to get an Adrian Peterson Gold Refractor Rookie. This set specifically I knew from looking at gem rate, from looking at raw cards that had sold or were available, was very, very hard to gem. I was able to buy a 10 for probably only, you know, maybe like two times or a little under that what a raw would have went for. I like PSA 10s and no not everyone does. I prefer to collect them. So this is an example where I could go buy four raws for, let's say again, it was like six, five, six hundred dollars ungraded versus just buying the 10 for 1000, right? That's something just I try to think through when I'm doing this specifically with your collection is that if you're on eBay, don't get cute all the time. You know, if sometimes a good deal is not the raw card. Sometimes it is the 10. If you, again, know you're guaranteed the 10, it's on a set that's very hard to grade, that sort of thing. It's all about, I always think like best bang for your buck, right? That's with all of it, what we just talked about. Really just think through where the best way to spend your money is. And honestly, what brings you the most happiness in your collection? That's the biggest thing here. So if you guys enjoy, hopefully this was helpful in some regard. I, I liked putting this together. I hope you enjoy these kind of videos because, again, I feel they're helpful, and I wish I had seen something like this when I first started collecting. Hope you all enjoy. Have a good week. I'll see you again soon.